everybody. Thanks for joining us here at Boondocker headquarters. We just arrived today. We're having a great time with these guys. This is Rocky Jr. Rocky Sr. is over there. He's got a close eye on everybody here. Yeah, he does. As you can see, things are happening. We are building that Razor 1000 for a, a client of Boondockers. And whenever I see something where I feel somebody can learn, I stop everything because I have that power. You yeah. have the camera. <laughs> yeah, you do. No. <laughs> Stop. Okay. Uh, we're talking about connecting rods, pistons, compression ratios, detonation, and all that. Um, you know, you showed us. You showed us this connecting rod here, for example. So let's go over. Let's go over first of all what it is that we're going to do with the Razor 1000. Why you're changing out the connecting rods and what you're changing them with, and then we'll get into the other stuff. Okay. So this is a stock connecting rod that we just took out of this this Razor 1000. And if you and if you look at it really close, you can see it on this big end. It's broken. It's actually cracked. This is a cracked rod. So the process they use with these is they they cast the rod and then they machine a groove in it and then they smack it and break them. So this is a really strong way to make a rod that makes the material the materials very strong because of all of the surface area from the break when you bolt it bolt it back together it's as if it was one solid piece right and kind of like a, a splined shaft if you will you have more surface area more area of contact. yeah a spline rather than like just a single keyway or That's something right. like that right exactly and so it's a really strong way to build a rod and so when you look at this I thought wow high performance but you don't have to look into it very far before you find out that the reason that they employ this kind of method is usually because they're using a less expensive material uh, it's also an, it's a it's a faster way it, it also removes one machining process and so the ma the material that the rod is made out of is obviously a brittle material so that it'll crack the problem with that is, is that it ends up really big and heavy down at this end, or really light at this end, and then it's a, it's a material that's prone to crack, and so the rod can break. So the extra stress that we're putting it under uh, in the, with a turbo, with a high horsepower, uh, you just run a really good risk of, of breaking a rod. So we highly recommend that we replace rods. Now, not everything needs rods, but this Razor 1000, with this rod in it, these got to go. If you're, yeah, okay, and you're running high boost, yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, and we do have some guys that run them, um, and for lower boost, anything below 12 pounds, uh, a lot of guys get away with it, and, and they work really good. Who wants to do that? Right, <laughs> right. Okay, uh, so you're going to replace them with We'll these. replace them with a Carrillo rod, and these are, uh, these are an H-beam rod. Really beautiful piece. So you can kind of see the difference. Most of the weight is out here. This is down on the crankshaft. So this is actually the most significant amount of weight on the rod is down here at the big end. And that's where this rod is really heavy. And this rod is really light down there. Um, the H-beam construction, it's called an H-beam because it's an H-beam construction. Um, this is super robust. I have seen motors run out of oil and seen the bearings lock up uh, tight. I've never seen one of these Corello rods break. And you're looking strong. at, yeah, you said about four ounces difference. Between the piston and rod combination, yeah, it's about a quarter of a pound difference. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's big. It's a lot. Rotating mass wise. Yeah. Wow. Stronger, less rotating mass, more power. Good time. So this is a piston that we have custom built for us. Um, it, we, we go with, we use JE to build these pistons. Um, they build a really lightweight piston, uh, very strong. Uh, the, the webbing in the bottom, this is a very modern looking piston. It's not just a big old round, you know, slug. Yeah. Like, uh, like some, of the, some of the other big pistons that are out there. Um, there. This is dished to lower the compression. This is actually a nine and a half to one compression. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but I wanted to show you kind of the difference. This is a stock piston. This is a good example to show you because this one has a broken ring land. You can see how thick that ring land is. It's pretty thick in comparison to what we have here, but it's cast. It's a cast aluminum. It's just, it's, it's not as strong. And so what will happen is when you experience detonation, that ring land breaks. When that ring land breaks, it causes a lot of pressure on the ring below it, and then it just keeps going. Pretty soon you, you lose compression on that cylinder. So, um, as far as detonation, what detonation is, uh, when, it, when an engine is, when it sparks and fires, it's not an explosion that's going on, it's actually a burning. Just like shooting a bullet out of a gun, you've got that powder burning behind it. And so you've got this burn that drives the cylinder to the, or the piston to the bottom of the cylinder. 
Um, and so what you get when you get detonation is it, it pops, it explodes before the piston, rather than pushing the piston down, it just boom. And, and that c causes a tremendous amount of pressure on the top of the piston. Um, it, can, it can actually, sometimes it's so violent it can close the gap on a spark plug, uh, stuff like that. Um, what causes that is high heat, in, uh, combustion chamber heat, uh, and that's from, from smashing too much air too tight. And so it'll actually ignite before the piston's on its down travel. If our timing's too far advanced, it can it can start the fire before it, the piston has a chance to start burning and, and follow you know and follow down the cylinder. And so what we do when we add boost, we're increasing the amount of air that that is ingested in the engine. And so we need to open up the the combustion chamber, and it opens up that compression ratio. So what you have stock is a ten and a half to one. So that means a cylinder volume is ten and a half times bigger than the com when the compressed air volume. And so we increase that um, compression ratio, we de decrease the compression ratio by increasing the combustion chamber with the dish and the piston. And then on this application where we're gonna be running a high boost on uh, 91 octane, or when it goes back to Saudi Arabia, it'll be on 95 octane, we're gonna go clear down to eight and a half to one. So we'll use this, this really strong nine and a half to one forged piston, and then we'll put a thicker head gasket in it also to give it that extra volume. Right. Uh, you said, yeah, these are JE, uh, these, they make these in NASCAR. NASCAR. Uh, they yeah, JE is, is their top notch uh, piston builder, for sure. Well, that's some serious piston bling right there. Well, very good. Well, thanks for that explanation about uh, detonation. A lot of people appreciate that. and. Uh, it's good to see this kind of thing. A lot of times we're dealing with two-stroke applications, which is, I mean, detonation is detonation, but uh, it's nice to see the four-stroke stuff. So, thank you very much for that. Onward and upward, on to the build. Awesome, thanks. What?